So we just finished reading about how Ra's children got lost and he sent his eye out to find him. And if you're looking at the pictures, Ra's eye is a symbol for the sun. Okay, and then now Ra is back with his children and we're going to keep reading to figure out how humans were created. I'm at the top of page five. Ra gathered his children to his chest and felt whole again. These children were his very limbs. They were his own breath, his own fluids. They were everything. He broke himself on the joy of being reunited and wept on his parts. With great sobs, he exhausted himself. And strange creatures, human beings, stepped delicately, delicately out of each teardrop, resplendent in their ne new, wet newness, gaping at the awe-inspiring wonder of creation. Innocent yet, yes, yet with hungry hearts, they made Ra's new eye bleak, and he sensed those hungry human hearts would allow innocence to be consumed and vanished. So let's go back in that paragraph. How does Ra respond to Tefna and Shu's homecoming. That means how does he respond when he saw that they had come home? And we're looking for, ooh, you guys, I misspell feeling. And we are looking for his two feelings and one thought. And it says, hmm, he gathered his children to his chest and felt whole again. Underline that sentence. Yep, and that's another way of saying that Ra hugged his children. Write that down under feeling and action. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the next thing. The text says these children's were, children were his very limbs. They were his own breath. They were his everything. Okay, so... And then it says that he wept and he had, and he cried and cried. And so that's another action. Write it down where it says feeling action. Ra also cried tears of joy. And he was also thinking about how his children were his everything. He thought about how much he loved them. So write that down for thought. Ra thought about how much he loved his children. And now you should be thinking, what does this reveal about his character? Well, if Ra cried tears of joy, he thought how much he loved his children, and he hugged his children, this probably means that he is a loving father. Silently write that down for 1B. Ra is a loving father. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready to, for box two. It says, what is, was an effect of Ra's tears? So that means what happened after Ra cried or what happened because Ra cried? So I'm going to go to the part in the text where it says he's crying and then I'm going to keep reading to figure out what happened. With great sobs, he exhausted himself. So sobs is another way of saying crying. And strange creatures, human beings, stepped delicately out of each teardrop. So when it says what was an effect of Ra's tears, we know that humans were created out of Ra's tears. Silently write that down for 2a. Humans were created from Ra's tears. To be to ask us, how does the author describe the humans? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to keep reading and focus on what the author tells me about the humans. What do they look like? What are they doing? Let's keep reading. It says, they are resplendent in their new, wet newness. So if something is resplendent, it is 
you know, it's fascinating, it's beautiful, it's almost glowing. It's as gaping in the awe-inspiring wonder of creation, innocent, and that he says they have hungry hearts. So we know the humans are beautiful, they um, are, you know, fascinated by creation, they are innocent, and they have hungry hearts. There, those are four things the author tells us about the humans. Silently write down how the author describes the humans in 2B. The humans are beautiful. They are in awe of creation. They are innocent. And they have hungry hearts. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready. Okay, and then the author asks us to zoom in on page six, right? To zoom in on that sentence in the first paragraph. And it says, so let's zoom in on it. It says, yet with hungry hearts that made Ra's new eye blink, for he sensed that hungry human hearts would allow innocence to be consumed and vanished. Okay, so now we're thinking, what does the author mean by hungry hearts? And this is an example of two kinds of figurative language. It's an example of alliteration, because it repeats the sound at the beginning of each word, hungry human hearts. But it's also an example of personification. Because hearts can't actually be hungry. So the author must be talking about something else. And so we should think, well, okay, when people talk about their hearts, what are they really talking about? And most of the time when people talk about their hearts, they're talking about how they're feeling, right? And so if someone has hungry hearts, um, that often describes hungry, often describes something that you want. Okay, so if the humans have hungry hearts, that means there is something that they want. And if we're thinking about most humans, what do most humans want to feel, or what do they want in their heart? And most people want their heart to be full of love. And so when we're thinking about what the author means for hungry hearts, we need to say, the author refers to the humans having hungry hearts. And that means that the humans want to feel loved. The author means that the humans want to feel loved. You must pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for 3B. And it asks us, what does, the, what does raw fear will happen to the humans? Well, let's keep reading the last part of that sentence that says, for he sensed that hungry human hearts would allow innocence to be consumed and vanished. Okay. And so he's saying that because they want to feel love, because their hearts are hungry for love, that means that they are no longer going to be innocent. He is afraid that the humans will lose their innocence because they want love. Silently write down your answer for 3B. All right, we're going to keep reading to figure out how Ra's old eye, the eye that's up in the sky, sun, that's up in the sky um, and now represents the sun, we're going to figure out how the old eye um, of Ra responds to these humans in the next paragraph. Pick up in the middle of the page. But the old eye of Ra, the original eye, was glad to see that humans were corruptible. Something's corruptible, that means like you can, that's a way of losing your innocence. It's like, you were doing the right thing, and you have this friend that comes along that's a really bad influence, and they start 
encouraging you to do the wrong thing. Uh, so they are corrupting you. Okay? So the old eye thought humans could be corrupted. He thought he could get humans, instead of wanting love, to want the wrong things. That eye wanted Ra's creation to make trouble for him. For Ra had been disloyal. Ra had replaced the old eye with a new eye, and the old eye smoldered in fury. Ra, stupefied at the old eye's reaction, he understood nothing of jealousy, nothing of loyalty. Those emotions came from interacting, and he had never had to interact with anyone but Tefna and Shu. Still, as his old eye hissed and spluttered, he understood the need for appeasement. And so he transformed his old eye into a snake, the very snake, very first snake ever, a cobra. And he picked it up and put it on the front of his forehead, the place of highest honor, and he called it his Iart. It worked. The Iart was proud to perceive Ra wherever he went. Let's go back to 4a. It says, how does the old eye of Ra respond to the humans? And if we go back up, it says in this first sentence, make sure you underline it. It says, he was glad to see the humans were corruptible, and he wanted to make trouble for Ra. So, the old eye wanted to be a bad influence on the humans because he was mad at Ra for creating a new eye and replacing him. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for 4B. The next one says, how did Ra respond to this problem? Well, if we go down to the middle of the third paragraph, Let's us know that he transformed the old eye into a snake and put that snake in front, um, on top of his head, on his forehead. So Ra turned the eye into a snake and put it on top of his forehead as a way to honor the old eye. Press pause to write down your answer and play to get started. And then it says, what does this reveal about his character? Well, this lets us know that, you know, Ra, when he, when he learns that he has done the wrong thing, he tries to do the right thing. So Ra has what we would call integrity. Integrity. After you write down your answer, you are ready to write your paragraph. How does Egyptian mythology explain how humans, and that should say were, created? All right, and you can use um, your answers from boxes one, two, and three to write your paragraph.